going to draw some fantasy maps. And this is one of my favorite things to do because it's just fun to think of a whole new world that we get to develop on our own. So when I'm drawing a fantasy map, I like to create a border first, thinking of an old fashioned map and just lightly drawing a border. I always work in pencil first, um, a nice sharp pencil for this project, but very, very lightly so that if I have to erase, it's easy to erase and we'll come up with this wonderful world to start with. And so you can have an island, you could have a valley, thinking of the wonderful maps from Lord of the Rings, you could have a whole world. I'm going to do the edge, the edge of a world. There's so many good books out there that have wonderful fantasy maps to them. Okay, so I've just drawn a loose water edge. I'm thinking about this as being water. I'm going to have a river. And the great thing is nothing's perfect. You don't have to have anything exact when you are designing a map. You just have to think of your own wonderful fantasy place. So I've got this river and it's going to join up with the ocean. And then usually, let's see, if we think about the ocean, maybe it's going to be a shoreline. So this will be sandy dunes. And then if there's going to be a mountain range, I'm going to think of the mountain range. It's going to be about here. So we're going to suggest mountains by drawing a range of pointy hills. And these will all get smaller as they get closer to this river. So we've got some hills. This is going to be sand. Um, on this side of the river, maybe those mountains turn into swamp. And so I'm going to draw a little little tufts of grass, just little tufts of grass, and little cattails to suggest that this is a swamp. And so what you're doing is you're giving the idea of what's going to be in the landscape. And then the little tufts of grass, maybe they get into some trees. So we want to suggest that this is a forest. So instead of drawing everything to scale, you're using symbols to suggest what each thing is. So these are symbols of trees, not the exact shape of the trees. And since I'm using kind of puffy trees, then these might be hardwoods or something. Whereas maybe over here in the mountains, much like the mountains here in Oregon, maybe these are actually more pine trees over here. And so we'll have different, these are different kinds of trees up over here. It's pretty cool when you can just create anything you want in your landscape. Okay, so that forest, that forest is kind of over here. Then maybe this is grasslands. So that's going to be grasslands. Oh, and the river, this part of the river, maybe it starts at a big mountain and it comes out of the mountain there's a cave so the river starts at a cave Ooh. and 
maybe from the cave there is a bridge and there's a road and the road leads to a little city so right here where the two parts of the river meet maybe there's a city now we could draw a city as just a dot and label it or we could draw a little shape of a city if it's a castle i'm going to make this a castle so i'm going to just draw the little suggestion of a castle because that's a good fortified spot right there where the two rivers meet and then it would go down and maybe the city is down here and it's a little city so we're just going to draw a few houses to suggest a city and maybe it's got a dock so we've got our little little village in the castle protecting it up at the river and so maybe up there out of that bridge the road goes the other way okay off into the grassland and so up here i'm going to put some snow on the mountains and let's see we've got oh let's let's make this a lake because we can so i'm just gonna turn that into a lake because i've been drawing very loosely then it's easy to change my mind and we can give these cool names as we are doing our final details but this is a lake okay this is so pretty good on this side let's give it some so this isn't a, such a lonely mountain we could keep it lonely mountain but this is not going to be quite so lonely a mountain there we go and maybe there's another village up here so maybe there's a road that cuts through the mountains and then there's another village up here okay and you can design your village there's lots of different ideas for designing a village it could be a little village we could put a wall around our village so that it's more of a city gate a fort okay and these are all light details we'll finish them off when um, we do the final inking stage okay so we've got we've got swamp we've got mountains we've got some trees we've got a cave uh, we've got some forest let's go out here into the water so water was scary territory back in the old days ye olden days and people would frequently in the early days of navigation they'd stick to the shoreline out here in the open ocean that was scary there were sea creatures so we're going to have one of those cool sea creatures in the water. And if you read the old Narnia books, I think of the maps and the diagrams. And then I just think of the scene from where the Dawn Treader is going out in the ocean and they're attacked by one of those sea creatures and so it's fun to visualize your favorite books as you are drawing a fantasy map and then oh we need a compass i'm going to put a compass down here so we know what everything is and you can download a blank template map so that you don't have to draw a compass in but it's good to let your viewer know what is north okay so 
this is north. Maybe in your fantasy world it's not called north, but in this fantasy world we're just going to call it north. We'll have one of those cool, cool little symbols. Okay, so we've got a compass, we've got a sea creature. To suggest that this is water I'm also going to draw a little boat. It doesn't have to be fancy. Here we go, a little sailboat, classic sailing boat. Out in the water, ready to encounter the sea creature. And we've got this island out here. So on this island, um, if, if there's a village there, let's go ahead and put a village over here too. Actually, let's put a castle. Because again, we can. It's our little fantasy world. So we're going to put a castle over here. And I can just see some kind of story of this castle and this island and a little village and the people being protected but by the two castles from maybe these are evil people up in this city. Maps can give you so many great ideas for what's going on in a world. And this is going to be a dense forest over here. And maybe there's something special up here. We could put an X for a treasure. We could have we could have some kind of a volcano. Let's turn this into a volcano. So the island has a volcano. All right. Our map is quickly filling up. Once you get enough details and you're happy with it the way it is, then it's time to ink. So usually when I'm drawing, I use a light table and I trace everything that I draw, but for simplicity, we're just going to ink straight over the top of what we've drawn and we'll just erase. So I'm going to start with my little village and there we go. And we've got that river. You know what, it makes sense to put a bridge there too. And you can label these as you're going. shoreline. You don't have to follow what you've already put down, but it helps. And this kind of castle wall, city wall, there we go. Little city wall and there's the city. The city inside. So you don't need all the details, you just need the suggestion of it. And then I'm going to use a thin line, so just the very tip of my pen to show that the road, see it's different than the shoreline, so we've got a road. And the road's going to go past that city, the road's going to go through the mountains and we'll give these a name. The, I'm going to turn this so I can write a little easier. So these are the mighty mountains Mighty Mountains, and the Mighty Mountains go all the way down the shoreline. There we go, and we've got that road. 
This is the high road. I'm going to turn the paper again. High road. Probably a lot of bandits on that road since it's the main road between this little village. And we'll have a little castle up there by the river, defending the Defending the river. There we go. And then we've got this swamp. Just even label it. Swamp. When in doubt. Write words as to what it is. Okay. Looks like a cute little swamp. I'm sure it's full of all sorts of disease and vermin and critters and things that will kill you. Those are the best kinds of swamps in fantasy books, the mystery swamps. I think of the never-ending story and the swamp in there. It's a very sad swamp. Okay, and then we've got, this is a nice forest. So it's not a dark forest, this is the We'll call this the Old Oak Forest. Old Oak Forest. Okay. And you can picture an old oak forest. There's probably lots of squirrels and fairies and dryads and all sorts of things living in this fantasy oak forest. One of my favorite book series when I was growing up were the Redwall books. They have wonderful maps if you want to look at what might be in the forest, what creatures and things you might find out in the forest, and the map. The maps are so good in the Narnia, or, or well, in the Narnia, but in the in the Redwall books. Okay, so let's have our river, and we're going up into the mountains. We've got the bridge. As that road goes there. And then we've got the big lake. We'll even label it Big Lake. Big Lake. Hopefully you're a lot more creative in your names than I am for this video. Okay, we've got Big Lake. And the road goes near Big Lake. We've got, these are the dark mountains. Dark mountains. A little harder to write. Dark mountains. There we go. You can picture from Lord of the Rings what might live in these dark mountains and that deep cave. All right. And we've got Okay, we've got our dark mountains. Oh, we've got this forest over here. So this isn't the oak forest. This is our pine forest. Think of the good pine forests like we've got 
here in Oregon. I had some friends visiting once and they said, what's on the other side of those hills that are covered in trees? As they were from somewhere else in the country. And I said, well, there are more hills with trees. And they said, yeah, but what's beyond the hills with trees? And I said, well, there's even more hills with trees. We just have lots of hills with trees. And she said, yeah, but what's beyond that? I said, well, then there are some mountains with trees. And then it gets to be a little bit more of the high desert. But yeah, there's just hills and hills of trees. So this is the dark forest next to the dark mountains. That's an F, not a P. There we go, dark forest. We don't know what lives here. It's scary. Okay. Probably lots of squirrels. Some giant spiders. And you can label little things like that if you know that there's a giant spider den or if there is a nice creature you could put like their little home that it's over here is the we'll do that we'll put a little home and this is jim's home we don't know why jim has a home out there maybe it's a little cottage This is the cave. Again, I hope you come up with much better names than I do. Okay, I'm going to suggest in the big lake that there's some waves. Okay, now let's go over here to the water. Oh, this is sand. So I'm going to put some dots. We said this was grassland, so I'm just going to put little tufts of grass. Our map is really coming together. So we can see that the grassland goes, it goes through here. And we can get the shoreline and with color this will also show up better okay so I'm gonna do some more dots for the sandy beach and this is I'll just call this city city of cats Maybe they have a lot of cats there. You could have a cat shaped island. That's a fun one to do. Okay, let's jump over here to, oh, we'll just do this. Since, our, since it's right here, we'll do the, the map legend. There we go. And in the old days, maps were hand drawn, so it's okay if they weren't perfect. They were more to show relationships of things. That we know that the little village is down at the mouth of the river from the castle. This might be the same distance as this actually is. But we don't know that. It's not that exact. So, okay, we've got our our legend there to tell us what direction. Okay, we'll draw our little sea creature, some waves. You could have a little mermaid out here in the water. And Any 
anything big and scary. It's kind of cool that in science, they've now found some of these things they used to consider mythical. The giant squid, things from the deep that are still washing up and scientists are amazed that they've never seen these things before. Those are some great videos. If you haven't watched videos of sea creatures, they, they're they just now discovering. There's so much we don't know about the ocean still. Okay, so we've got our boat. And then this is the, I'm gonna make my volcano bigger because I can. This is the tall volcano. Okay, and then these are some some bushes or something on the island. Got the castle. And some dots for the shoreline. Okay. Now, to make the edge of my map, I'm going to draw a nice broken edge as if it was a rough old piece of parchment. If you carefully take a candle, you could even kind of singe the edge when you're done, but definitely want to do that outside and with adult supervision. Otherwise, you might just burn your map. It's one thing to have a singed map. It's another thing to completely destroy it, but then it would really be very secretive world that you developed if you go ahead and destroy the map right after you create it. So that might not be the best of ideas. All right. Notice I turn my paper to what's most comfortable for my hand when I'm drawing. This allows me to have the smoothest strokes. Notice I'm not doing short strokes. I'm, even though these are jagged, I'm trying to do long, smooth strokes. And it's okay that my map legend goes off the page. It's a legendary map. Now, time to erase. So when you're erasing, you want to not rip the paper, so you don't want to scrub back and forth. So you hold the paper down, you erase in one direction. If there's a stubborn line, you can go over it two or three times. But hopefully you drew light enough with that pencil that you don't have too many deep lines. And there we go. We're making some progress. If you scrub back and forth, then you run the likelihood of ripping your paper. And that's not good. I have destroyed good drawings, which is why I definitely use a light table in my professional work. So that I avoid ripping, ripping my paper. Sure, it means I kill twice as many trees, which is unfortunate but at least I'm not ruining my original. Okay. There we go. Okay. 
Okay, it was all covered in dust. Okay. Missed a few spots, but it's not too bad. Now, when I'm coloring a map, it doesn't need to have a lot of color, just the suggestion of color. And in fact, a lot of times maps, fantasy maps won't have any color. But I'm gonna give this just a little bit of color. So I'm gonna take a blunt colored pencil and lightly, very lightly shade in an area. Again, I don't need a bunch of color. I just want the suggestion of color. And I can color in circles. I don't want lines to show up. So whatever technique you use, as long as you get the color in there nice and lightly without it being streaky. And that's where using a blunt pencil for these large areas is good because we're not adding a bunch of detail. We're just coloring in details or we're coloring in a suggestion of details. Okay, so I've got the dark forest and the old oak forest. Oh, I've got this green out here on this island. Whatever this unknown green is. Coloring this in, I can think of so many of my favorite books and spending hours looking at the maps and trying to picture what the author was suggesting. Okay, let's do some water. So with water, there's a lot of water. What I like to do is color the edge of the water. I'm not coloring all the water. People get the idea. It's water. So I'm starting with a lighter blue and I'm coloring it so that it kind of fades out into the large body of water. And it's darker close to the shoreline. And this is pretty light on the camera, but I'm gonna be darkening it with a second layer of blue. So we've got our blue, blue water fading out. There we go. If you run a Google search on hand-drawn maps, you'll get lots of great ideas for how other people have drawn or depicted things as they do maps. You'll see some things that are repeated over and over and some things that might be unique just to that artist. A lot of these ideas are taken from actual antique maps. I love antique maps myself and so I have a few of them in my house, or at least reprints of antique maps. And so it's fun to see how back in the 1500s, they would incorporate sea creatures out into the water or they'd draw little villages to suggest how big the village was. Okay, I'm coming in with a darker blue, just along the shoreline. And now look at how our map is starting to get some definition. Just having two shades of blue really makes it easy to tell what is land and what is water. We'll have the river. Going into Big Lake, Big Lake. We can color the whole thing blue. So I'm using 
that blunt side of the pencil, coloring very lightly. You don't want to crush the paper fibers. So when you color in circles nice and lightly with colored pencils, there's a cool word for it called scumbling. So you're coloring in circles without crushing the fibers of the paper. And this means that you can layer more colors onto your artwork without getting that shiny effect that you get sometimes with colored pencils. Okay, so I'm also going to darken the edge of the lake to give it some definition. And I've got those waves out there, so I'm going to give them a little bit of color too. Some little details. There we go. And the river goes up to the cave. Okay. Not too bad. Okay, we've got the sand. So I'm going to lightly color the sand. There we go. Doesn't take much. You can quickly color your map. Because we are just trying to suggest things. It doesn't have to be perfect. The Mighty Mountains. We've got this kind of dirty sand color. So I've got the big color area. And then I'm going to come in with a slightly darker color just to give it a little bit of definition. I'm trying to keep it consistent. So it's always on one side. Look at how other people have done it for some ideas. You might give your mountains a little bit more detail than I've done. There's some great ideas, like I say, in other people's maps. They might use cross-hatching to suggest color and definition. So there we go. Oh, the swamp. The swamp is going to be... I'm going to put down this dingy sand color plus some green. And there's kind of water, so I'm going to put down a little bit of blue in there too. It's just kind of a weird, weird mix of colors over here in the swamp. Okay, let's see, we've got Tall volcano. We'll put a little gray over here. Try to keep my shadows all on the same side. And put a little brown into the tall volcano. The tall volcano has lava, so that is not snow on top of tall volcano. Go. And then these dark mountains, since they're dark, I'm going to color them dark. Okay, well, not really dark. Just more of a gray, leaving the snow. There we go. little bit of 
definition up here and the shadows. All right. And while I've got this gray out, I'm going to give our cities a little bit of color. There we go. You can color your map legend if you'd like. And I didn't title my world, but an important part of this would be naming your world. So I'm going to do that now. This is going to have the lovely name of my world map. Very creative name. My world map. All right. That's my quick idea for how to draw a fantasy map. So I hope that you get a chance to draw your own maps and experiment on your own and have a great time drawing and we'll see you again sometime later. Thanks for joining us.